Come on. Back shot I've ever seen in my life. Called for another one. <laughs> A shame he had a full house. He can't win them all. Drinks on in. Those are the meanest, toughest killers I ever saw. Who are they? Well, them's the Slade boys. Didn't you know that? No. We're sure lucky they didn't plug us, too. The Slade boys. I'm sure glad they're riding on through. Do you know where they're heading? I heard them mention a place called Kiowa Flats. Slade boys. Kiowa Flats. <laughs> Remind me to ride clear of that place, will you? Come on, give me a drink. Yeah. Get in the house, you hear me? Keep off the streets. Now go on and get. No sense looking for trouble. Darn thing never was no good no how. Nobody start nothing. Hey, Oz. Yeah. Let's march some of the trail list out. It's a good idea, little Joe. <laughs> Howdy. 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 Morning, Sheriff. Morning. Morning. 
Well, don't mind if I do. Who's my uncle? <clears throat> You're always talking about how well you knew them Slade boys. That's huh? right, that's right. Yeah, just how uh, just how well do you know them? Sheriff, me and them Slade boys was practically weaned together. I am their bosom friend. Yeah. That's well, my... your bosom friends just rode into town. Yeah, my... Yeah, yeah, all right. You say that again. Your bosom friends just rode into town. Well, why would those two murderous villains want to come to a miserable hole like Kiowa Flats? Because Alonzo McFadden hired them to kill off all the Hatfield boys, that's why. Oh, that's right. Well, where, 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 where are they now? In the bar. Oh, no, they're, they're terrible. They'll... No, Sheriff, that's the only bar in town. No, 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 Never mind. mind. What do you mean, never you mind? Listen to me. All right. All right. All right. Go to the livery stable. Get a horse. Hire it. Charge it to me. Right. And ride out and tell old Jubal Hadfield not to come into town for quite a spell. Jubal Then when you come back, look me up because I'll need you to identify them two fellas. Oh, right, right. Well, I'll do it right. Yeah. And look, look, look. Look after the bar. Will you? Look after Yeah, me. I will. Hey, hello, Joe. Is there something wrong with me? Do I smell or something? I oh, smell about the same. How about me? About the same. Say, mister. Yes, yes, sir. Is there something wrong with us or something? Oh, no. No, no sir. No, you, you're just fine. Just fine. Bring us another beer. You want another beer? Yeah, this is fine here. Nice day, eh? Yeah. Ain't good enough to drink. Ain't good enough sheep to sheep this. I say it's a nice day, eh? Oh, yeah, yes. It's it's fine day. Uh, I mean, it's a nice day. About, a, about as nice a day as we ever had. I can't remember a nicer one. It was, well, maybe back in 47 or 48. I might have had something better. I, I don't remember. Well, it, it's, it's kind of warm. Well, it's, it's, it's not too warm. Maybe a little on a chilly side. Well, all, any kind of weather's all right with me, so, so long as it don't bother, bother you none. Yes, it's a nice day. Uh, I don't know. I reckon they ain't used to strangers or something, little Joe. Yeah, so. Let's get out of here. like nobody's here. You know, I don't like this. Let's get out of here. Oh, no, little Joe. I just don't like it. There's something funny about the people around here. Well, I'm too tired to argue about it. Just sign her name and get a room. How are we going to get a room? There's nobody here. Just sign her name and pick one. One with a lock. Hang the expense. <laughs> hey, now they're going upstairs. They're going to stay all right. Oh, did you see the way they looked at me? Yeah. Oh, gentlemen, there was death in them eyes. Sudden death. Oh, I tell you, when, when, when they took that swallow beer and uh, that big one made that face and he looked dissatisfied and uneasy-like, oh, I tell you, I could hear them pearly gates ajar and open. But if, if you gentlemen will excuse me, I, I feel considerable shook. And I, uh, I'm a mite shook up myself. Uh, Miss Lona Doon and ladies, if I was you, I'd get in off the streets. It's apt to be a mic dangerous. Be Bannerman Brown. 
Well, there's some in this town have a sense of duty. If others that ought to ain't... Yes, now, where are they? They're... Uh, uh... Stand aside, B. Bannerman Brown. I, I... Will you get out of the way? Come, ladies. Repent, sinners. The day of retribution is at hand. Yes, ma. I reckon it is. Us poor, frail females have come to throw ourselves on your mercy. You come to do what, ma'am? We want you should spare us our men. Amen. Amen. Well, there ain't enough of them to go around as it is. Amen. Don't you worry none, ma'am. We, we'll spare you men if, if they're worth sparing. Yeah. Hey, what do you reckon he meant by all that? That beats the heck out of me. Somebody's shooting at somebody. I think it's us. What the heck did we do? I ain't fine, no, but I'm gonna find out. For this. Sure ain't worth much now. Man, wasn't that good shooting? Well, look, next time we use your own neck cloth, please. I just hope there's gonna be a next time. Hey, you in there! Huh? We know who you are and what you're here for. You can die now or later. If you want a chance to make your peace, throw out your gun. Hey, they got us mixed up with somebody else. I sure hope so. Well, why else would they be shooting at total innocent strangers if they didn't have us mixed up with somebody? I don't know. This is Texas, though, huh? Yeah. Well, reckon we better go ahead and do what he says, throw our guns out, and then go out and see what it's all about. Come on. All right. Let's try it again. What are your names? And what are you doing here? Done told you and told you that our names is Cartwrights and we're down here to we're down here to buy cattle. Ants. Go on, boy. Oh. I told you not to lie to me. We ain't lying. Of course you ain't. You just come down here to buy cows. Texas cows. Now who in his right mind is gonna believe? Anybody come down here to buy Texas Longhorns, I ask you. I told you. We're going to take them back up to our, our ranch in Nevada and, and cross them with our own herd so as we'll have a, a hardier breed. And you two are going to drive them cows clean across West Texas, right on up through a hunk of New Mexico, all the way to the Nevada Territory, just the two of you? Yeah, that's what we said. It's a fine lie, gents. A fine lie. It's the kind of noble, inspired lion that does credit to the folks that raised you. But it don't wash out here. Now, I'll tell you who you are. You're them two low-down, gun-slinging, murdering, hydrophobic skunks of Slade boys that was hired by old man McFadden to wipe out us Hadfields because he couldn't do it himself. And then, now look, we never, we never heard of the McFaddens, and we never heard of the, the Hatfields. And that's the truth. Ain't they the living wonders, though? Ants, take them out and do what has to be done. Come on. Come on. 
Hey, hey, what in time is going on here anyway? What, what are you fixing to do to these fellas? Kill them? They're the Slade boys. You, you can't do that. You ain't sure they're the Slades. Ain't sure. Ain't you? You see them, don't you? Sure, I see them, but I never see the Slades in my life, and neither did you. It's uh, right there, Pa. Yeah, Twirly, Twirly Boggs, he says he knows them. He says he knows them a long time back in Austin. Oh, Twirly? Yeah. Fine. Fetch him in here. Let him identify him, and then we'll kill him if it'll make you any happier. Oh, well, you see, Twirly ain't exactly around right at this moment. Oh. <laughs> Ants, take him out. Come on. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Won't do no harm to wait till morning, will it? Where are we gonna keep him until morning? Paul, why don't we just stick him in Brown's jail and let him take responsibility for him? You leave me in my jail out of this. Ants, take him out. I'm a wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, all right, all right. Just get somebody to help me get him over to jail, that's all. Today, Bannerman Brown. On your way, on your way. You make sure they're there come morning. Or I might just take it into my head to vacate your office. I'm getting sick of you. Well, Joe, I got a funny feeling the law in this town is sure easily influenced. Yeah, all you need is a Navy cope. Oh, uh, you fellas comfortable and happy? I mean, uh, can it get you anything? A bottle of whiskey or a couple of steaks or something? When are you going to let us out of here? Well, tomorrow morning. One way or another. What do you mean, one way or another? Well, if I can find Twirly Boggs and he says you ain't the Slade boys, I'll, <laughs> I'll turn you loose. <laughs> yeah, but what's going to happen if you can't find Twirly Boggs? You get hung. <laughs> I just about got it figured out. Yeah, what? This whole dang town is touched. Oh, come on. Who ever heard of a whole town being touched? Feller told me one time they got a weed down here, and they call it a loco weed. When the horses and cows eat it, they get wilder and all get out. Well, so people don't eat weeds. Yeah, but they eat beef, don't they? One of them critters gets all filled up on that there loco weed, it kind of solves the meat down, wouldn't it? Yeah, that makes sense. It sure does. Little Joe, you don't reckon they're really going to hang us, do you? Well, I don't know. If they're joking us, they're sure pushing it pretty far. Hang on. Don't blob. Blab. Oh, don't blab. Rescue is at hand. Signed, Black Alonzo, the Red-Handed Avenger. Who do? Even the kids have been affected by that loco beef in this town. Sheriff Brown. Oh, good evening, Miss Lorna Doon. Good evening, ladies. I have fetched my tribute. Yes, my uh, I guess as much. Me and the ladies of the town have come to comfort them poor sinners in their final hour. Well, the good book says we should forgive our enemies. We are told to bring solace to the afflicted, even though they are a couple of low-down murdering skunks. Yes, my here, uh, here's the keys. Uh, you go in and uh, console them low-down murdering uh, uh, them uh, and poor lost sheep. Me, I got work to do. Good night, ladies. <laughs> Poor doomed prisoners, it ain't too late. Down on your knees as you face your awful fate. Repent your crimes before that trap is sprung. And you, like a side of beef, are hung. Poor soul, if when you come up close and scooch again the bars, you could kind of rest your poor head on my shoulder. It ain't fair hanging men when there ain't enough to go around as it is. If and you don't mind, I'd like to finish my little tribute whilst there's time. Um, uh, Ma'am, uh, did you have many more of those? No, just ten or twelve more verses. 
Well, I didn't have enough time to do a real good job on it. That's a shame. Now, your poke is spent, and you can take my word. We'll remember the gent that went riding herd, a fighting and shooting like desert rats to come to their end in Kiowa Flats. Now, toll the bell. Their souls are flat. There'll be much more of this, horse. Shh. Them two poor boys are hanging dead. Somewhere their kinfolk will weep and pray. This is worse than hanging. For them that got heisted up today. Did you really like it? Ma'am, I thought he was prime. Just prime. Well, it ain't often I get a chance to recite my tribute to the dear departed before they're departed. No, ma'am, I don't reckon you do. I suppose you'd like to have it buried with you. Most folks do. <laughs> oh, Clara Lou, stop that noise. I can't help it. There ain't enough men to go around, and here they go, wasting two at the same time. Amen. Amen. It's a woman's place to endure, Clara Lou. Well, I don't mind enduring if I got a man to put up with. Speaking of which, Lizabelle, I notice you've been hanging on to a certain hand half the live long night. Clara Lou Kinsey. Well, I can't help it. She's just a selfish thing, that's all she is. Well, I never. I guess a certain person can hold another person's hand if they choose. Well, a certain person didn't have to choose the way another certain person grabbed onto it. I wouldn't act like such a huzzy if I was you, Clara Lou Kinsey. Well, at least I ain't a flipperty gibbet, like some Lizabelle Jones. <laughs> Loose from them pesky females, boys, and get a move on. We're busting you out. And who are you? Alonzo McFadden, you dang fool, the one that hired you. What well, come on? Alonzo McFadden! Come on, boys. Women, I want you to meet my friends. My good friends, Big Jack and Shorty Jim Slade. Boys say howdy. My wife, Wheezy, and my daughter, Amanda. Howdy, ma'am. Howdy. Mr. McFadden, you're making a terrible mistake. You see, we ain't really... There. Never mind that. Now we'll talk in the morning. Hey, but look, Mr. McFadden, we're... In the duration. How you boys go on and on. Dad, burn it, Mr. McFadden. We ain't the Slade boys. You ain't? No, we ain't. That's what we've been trying to tell you all the way in from town. Look, we're the cart, right? What's the matter? You scared? No, we ain't scared. And we do appreciate you busting us out of that jail, Mr. McFadden. That, Bernard, if it'd make you feel any better, I almost wish we was the slave boys, but we just ain't. Say, so if, if you don't mind, we'll, we'll just mosey on back. Bye, ma'am. <laughs> First one side don't believe us, and then the other. Yep. We got ourselves in the middle of something, and I don't like it. Yeah, that's for sure. What do you think we ought to do about it? Well, I'll tell you, little Joe. I done been hauled up, hauled down, and threatened with a hanging, and thrown in jail, and busted out of jail, and poetized at, and shot at, and reared halfway across the state of Texas in the dark. I'm going to get some sleep. I don't know what you're going to do. Who are you? Turn him around, little Joe. Yeah. I thought I'd recognize that patch. You wouldn't be Black Alonzo, the red-handed Avenger, would you? I was gonna bust you out. Only Pa and the boys got there first. Yeah, well, just how was you figuring on busting us out? Figured to dig a tunnel. That's a good way to bust out of dungeons. Mm. Yeah, you, uh... You're pretty well posted on things, ain't you, fella? You just bet I am. 
I'll bet you even know what we're doing here, don't you? Shucks, half the country knows Pa hired you to kill Ann's Hadfield. Nah. Uh, just why are we supposed to kill Ann's Hadfield? He's the fastest gun around here, ain't he? None of us McFadden's can hold a candle to him. We gotta get rid of him before we can kill the rest of the Hadfields. Well, how come you gotta kill all them Hadfield? Don't you fellas know anything? It's a feud. He's kind of dumb, ain't he? <laughs> Why, you little... You just touch me and I'll holler for... Black Alonzo, you tell your pa that we hate to leave like this, but we just ain't the slave brothers, you hear? You thank him for busting us out of jail, all right? collect the bodies. Hey, Slade boys, on your feet. Look, we're not just... Oh, never mind. I want you two to listen and listen good. I hired you to do a job for me, and last night you tried to run out on your obligations. And a Mr. McFadden... Shut up and listen! I'm giving you fellas a fair choice. Now, you can take them guns and do the job you're supposed to. Got another choice. Name your pison, boys. That burn it, Mr. McFadden. Don't you folks ever think any other use for a rope around here? First, the Hadfields want to hang us for being the slave brothers. Now you want to do it because we ain't. I'm getting awful tired of hearing that same old tired lie. All right, boys, heist them up. Now hold on just a minute. That burn it, Mr. McFadden. I'm getting sort of tired of being called a liar, too. We ain't the slave boys. All you gotta do is ride into town and look up a feller named Twirly Boggs. Sheriff Brown told us that he knew the slave boys, and he can tell you right quick we ain't them. That's right. All right, boys. If it'll make you feel better disposed to do the work you was hired for, we'll all saddle up and ride into town. We'll look up Twirly Boggs. Take the gun, boys.
Ezra. I know there was a jail that could hold them slaves. You see, I know them boys. I know them real good. I went to school with the Aunt Emmeline, see? I tell you, those boys would gouge your eyes out if they thought you looked at them in the wrong way. They would shoot you if they wanted a little target practice. Why, them boys... They... Who's buying, gents? Them boys, they had a man for breakfast every day of their life from the day that they put on long pants. Yes, sir. They had two on Sundays. Never touch me, though. No, sir. They like me. You see, they like me real good. But I, I, I... Oh, come on now. Somebody stole my drink. Let's have a drink here. I tell you, them two Slade boys is two curly wolves. They have a big wind off in the prairie. They walk in blood. And where they breathe, they leave behind them ruin. Get ready for ruin right now, because here they come. Oh, hallelujah. They look mad. I'm getting out of here. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Help me save the whiskey. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Howdy. Brown, where's Twirly Boggs? Come out of there, Boggs! Wait a minute. Wait, 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 not go massacre and twirly bog now. I ain't never done no harm to nobody. Come here, Fox. Yeah, I'm right here. I'm right here. Take a look at these two. Are they or ain't they the Slade boys? Well, uh... Are they or ain't they? You just go right ahead and answer, Mr. Boggs. Tell him the truth. Ain't nobody gonna hurt you. Key wrecked. Ain't nobody gonna hurt you. Uh, 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 that's fine. Well, uh, excuse me. Uh, you know, that's like boys, all right. I seen a lot of them down in Austin. <laughs> Hi, boys. What's the matter, boys? Don't you know me? I'm Twirly Boggs. <laughs> Remember, uh, I, I, I used to go to school with your old Aunt Emmeline. That does it. Take these and do the job you're supposed to. Or you won't be around to taste air come tomorrow morning. Thanks a lot, Mr. Boggs. Howdy, boys. Howdy. Howdy, Mr. Brown. Boy, anybody comes riding into this, they're gonna get slaughtered. <laughs> yeah, they got guns planted in the windows and up on the roofs and whatnot. Yeah. Well, maybe the Hatfields won't ride into town after all. <laughs> They'll ride in all right. They got the news. Seems a terrible shame, don't it? All these folks killing each other. Not a few like this ever get started, Sheriff. Over a hog. Over a hog? Yep, just a plain common, ornery, razorback hog. I, I'll tell you boys all about it, but first I got to uh, <coughs> get a little potation to <coughs> loosen up the vocal cords. I'll tell you the whole sad tale. Come on. Uh, Charlie. Thanks, son. You gentlemen. Care for some more sheep dip? Uh, I mean, beer? Yeah, give us a couple of beers. Yeah, well, as I, as I thought to tell you, out there, see these here Hadfields and McFaddens? They've been slaughtering one another, man and boy, for the last 30 years. Yeah, well, how did the hog get mixed up in this? Well, come on, sit down, boys. I'll tell you. All about it. See, Lance Hadfield, he was fattening him a razor back shoat, you see, for his winter meat. Well, one morning, that uh, shoke turned up missing. <laughs> so, uh, so he, uh, 
Got his gun, saddled up, and went out looking for her. Couldn't find her. But as he was passing by the McFadden's cabin, he, uh, pork roast him. So he went in, and of course, naturally, they asked him to stay to supper. And lo and behold, they brought on a great big mess of fresh roast pork. He know the had who didn't have no pig, so he accused them of stealing his. <laughs> And then the shooting started, and it's been going on ever since, for 30 years. All that killing over one dead burned old fattening hog. Now, look here, Mr. Brown, you were sheriff then. Now, how come you didn't stop it? Oh, shucks, I, I tried two, three times. It, it didn't do no good. She nobody, nobody pays much attention to me. They, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm getting old, or maybe just... Maybe it's because I'm getting a little cowardly. I don't know. <laughs> you, uh, you boys don't look so darn old. <laughs> you sure don't look like cowards. <laughs> uh, well, Sheriff, you're not suggesting that we do something about the feud. I mean, after all, we're supposed to be the Slade brothers. Ah, shucks. I know you want gunmen the minute I laid eyes on you. I can tell a killer a mile off aside that Twirly Boggs is the biggest liar in the whole great state of Texas. And that son's just covering a heap of territory. Hey, well, if you knew, why didn't you say something? First, first the McFadden's were going to hang us and the Hatfields are going to shoot us? Well, I, well, I kind of thought maybe I was holding a hand I could draw to. But, oh, never mind. By the way, I uh, snuck your horses out of the livery stable and tied them back in the alley, and your gun is in my office. Sheriff, we sure do appreciate this. Come on, little Joe. Thanks, thanks an awful lot, Sheriff. It's all right, boys. Hey, Buck. Hey, Buck. Come here, boy. Where, where are you going to that right? I'm going to kill me some headfield. Yeah, even the kids are thinking like that. That yeah, seems like a shame, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, let's go. Come on, who are you joking? That's what I like about us as a family, little Joe. Pa always taught us to never do nothing the others be ashamed of. I'd like to keep it like that. I just wonder if there's anything we can do, like B. Bannerman Brown said. Well, I don't know, but let's try. Come on. You boys change your minds about going? Well, sir, you, you might say we had our mind changed for us. I don't know what we're going to do, but whatever it is, I think we better get started. Hey, listen, you got any ideas, Sheriff? Yeah, got one. Lorna Doon Mayberry. Lorna Doon Mayberry. <clears throat> See, my grandpappy always told me, he always says, says he says, son, you get the women on your side, and the battle's won. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. Me and my little brother are in a peck of trouble and... Well... Come on. Tell me what it's all about. Come on. Well, first of all, ma'am, there, there's just about to be a bunch of killing out there in that street. There's always killing in that street. Oh, well, yes, I mean, that seems to me like it's a terrible waste. I mean, there not being enough men to go around for all you ladies like it is. There ain't a woman living can keep men from fighting. Well, Ma'am, I beg to differ with you. You see, sometimes women folk can sort of get around men folk in little ways. And, and I figured maybe if you ladies tried right hard, you might be able to get around these. You ain't as dumb as you look. What do you want me to do? Hmm? Well, Ma'am, here's our plan. We figured it. Fireman. Hold it, 
Get that wagon. Hold your fire. Have you lost what few wits you ever had? I got my wits, Jubal Hotfield, and that's more than you can say. Us women got a few things to tell you. And you can start your fighting after you hear this out. All right, ladies. Well, they gotta listen to you. I got something to say. You all know me. I'm Wheezy McFadden. I'm Ann's Alonzo McFadden. He's over there behind them barrels and things with the rest of the McFaddens. Alonzo, I want you to listen to me. I can't have no more chilling. But I ain't gonna cook for you, nor wash for you, nor do anything a wife's bound to do for her man till you put down that gun and come out of there. Alonzo, I mean it. I'm Susan Hatfield. I guess you all know who I'm talking to. What Wheezy says goes for me too, Jubal. I won't be the kind of wife I should till you stop this fighting. I'm talking to you, Anne Tadfield. You heard your ma talk, and you heard my ma. You're on one side, and I'm on the other. Here I am, Anne. But don't come after me with a gun in your hand. Boy, you get back here. You hear me? You men want to hear some more? Just a dying minute. What tarnation's going on here? Hey! Confound it, get back here! This ain't no way to run a feud! And it was such a nice day for her, too. <coughs> Hatfield? I'll buy a drink. A drink? All right. I'll accept your offer, and I'll buy another. Fair enough. <laughs> Whiskey. Whiskey. Yes, Lana, that was a mighty fine thing you just done. Lana, 15 years ago, you, you said to me that if I ever... If... I think we done hung around here long enough. We better be just riding on and tending our business, not oh. buying cattle. Oh, let's take it easy. A guy has to have a little chance to relax. Boys, here's your hats and here's your own guns. Well, sure, if we, we were just beginning to enjoy this town. Yeah, but don't forget the silly heap of folks around here that still think you're the Slade boys. <laughs> now, uh, word to the wise. <laughs> You've had plenty for today, little Joe. Come on. <laughs> Come 
Hatfield. You put her there. Alonzo McFadden, you're a good old sock. Thank you, Jubal. The best. Except for one thing. What did I do wrong, Jubal? Bringing in them hired killers to settle a dispute between two Texas gentlemen. I'm ashamed of you. Jewel, I'm a dirty dog. Oh, now, don't take on. I'm a dirty dog. Jubal, this has got to be wiped out in blood. All right. Whose blood? Who do you suppose? Those two dirty, miserable killers that came along into our peaceful little community trying to stir up trouble between us two peace-loving families. That's what I like about you, Alonzo. You think the same as me. <laughs> Let's go round up a couple of the boys, just in case. <laughs> How far is the Kiowa Flats? Just a couple of miles back down the road. Hey, you don't suppose it? I think so. Come on, let's get out of here. Sorry, I didn't see you. Well, you don't sound half sorry to me. Look, I said I was sorry. Why don't we leave it at that? If you don't mind, we'll call the shots. Now, suppose you use the other side of the street. Joe! Joe, come here! Your daddy's calling you, little boy. <laughs> right, I'll take you one at a time. Joe! What's the matter, Joe? Didn't you hear me calling you? <laughs> you see what they were trying to do? Yes, I saw what they were trying to do. I also saw the half dozen men across the street ready to back them up. Yeah, well, I don't care how many there are. Look, what's got into this town? You can't walk down the street anymore. We're just gonna stand by and let them get away with it. Now, look, do you think that walking into a trap they deliberately set for you and getting your head broken is gonna stop them? Now, get along to Mr. Cameron's store and help Hoss load the supplies. I'll round up Adam and join you. Cameron, what's your answer? You know my answer. I won't back down for you or Sam Bryant or any of the gang. Well, now, that's just plumb too bad. No.
No. No. You killed him. Now, whatever makes you say a thing like that? Joe, what's going to happen? Hey, Sheriff, what kind of town you running here? Gonna stand there and let that fella hold a gun on me? Sheriff, he killed my husband. Well, Miss Cameron, you don't mean that. You killed him. Well, Miss Cameron, that's a terrible thing to say. Why, well, I got some friends that'd be downright upset to hear you say a thing like that. We know who your friends are. Why don't you leave her alone? Here, let me handle this. Back, come on. I don't know what makes us say a terrible thing like that. You killed him, Perkins, and you know it. I'll take care of this card, right? All right, Perkins, let's go. I'm locking you up. All right, Sheriff. If that's what you think you ought to do. Nice, neat place you got here, Sheriff. Real nice. Yes, sir, you keep it up real nice. <laughs> you know the way, Perkins. Anything you say, sir. Anything you say. I'm there, Perkins. Waste of time you locking me in here. You know that, don't you? But if that's the way you want to do business. <laughs> Howdy, Sheriff. Hey, tell me you got one of my boys in here. How much is bail gonna run? Circuit judge is in town, Brian. I ain't setting no bail. That's a judge's job. Well, I suppose the judge's got to earn his money, too. That you, Sam? Sure is, Farmer. They treating you good? Just fine, Sam. Just fine as can be. They don't treat you right. You just let your old friend Sam Bryant know, yeah? <laughs> don't tell me to let Perkins go already. No, they ain't. But it might be a real good idea. Not this time, Bryant. Jet Scribner's in town. He says he'll hold a hearing on Farmer Perkins down at town hall just as soon as he can get there. You know something? I sure hate to see outsiders like the judge get mixed up in our private affairs. I think outsiders ought to tend their own business. And that goes for you Cartwrights, too. See you later, Sheriff. Gentlemen. Perkins get a fair hearing now, don't you? Well, you're, 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 all right, now sit down, everybody. Go right ahead, Your Honor. Are the witnesses present? Two of them are right here, Your Honor. Your Honor, before you start, I think you should know these two didn't see a thing. Are you acting as lawyer for Mr. Perkins? Well, Your Honor, I'm acting like just what I am. Farmer Perkins' friend. I'll not have any more of these outbursts. All right, Mrs. Cameron. Is Mrs. Cameron present in the court? Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Doctor? Mrs. Cameron is in no condition to testify at the present time. 
Yes, but she was an eyewitness to the alleged crime. Do you measure emotions by the clock, Your Honor? This woman just saw her husband shot down in cold blood. <laughs> Doctor, you please resist passing judgment. I ask you if Mrs. Cameron is present in this court. No, she is not. She's in my office, a very sick woman. May I ask the nature of her illness? You certainly may. It's the same sickness that afflicts this entire town. Fear! <laughs> Can we now hear from the other witnesses? Well, sure, we're all witnesses, everyone here. Hey, that's right. I'll be witness for you any time, Farmer. How are you? Hey, you are, These here are my character witnesses. Best money can buy. <laughs> I'll not have a travesty made of my court. <laughs> I'll testify, Your Honor. My brother and I were outside of Cameron's store when we heard the shot. We ran in and found Farmer Perkins. Mr. Cameron was on the floor dead and his wife was standing over him. That's exactly the way it happened. But you did not see the actual shooting. No, Your Honor, we did not. All right, Mr. Perkins. Well, now, Your Honor, my good friends here, the Cartwright boys, They've already said all I know. It's the same thing with me, exactly. I heard a shot. I ran in, and that was poor Mr. Cameron. And that right pretty wife of his. Don't suppose she shot him, do you? Hey, that's right, Mr. Carter. She must have done this, Are there any other eyewitnesses to the alleged shooting? I mean, other than Mrs. Cameron. Judge. You know as well as I do what kind of man Farmer Perkins is. At this moment, Mr. Perkins's character is not on trial. Due to the failure of our only eyewitness to appear, I must adjourn this hearing. <laughs> Only until Mrs. Cameron is available to testify. Meanwhile, the suspect is to remain in the custody of the sheriff. Hey, now what's he talking about? Just a minute. Uh, he's subject to bail, isn't he? I mean, he hasn't been charged with anything yet. I've already drawn up the paper, Your Honor. <laughs> All right, Ben. You saw it. All legal, right down the line. I could have told you that it happened. Well, I just don't know what's gotten into the people of this town. They're just going to stand by and watch them get away with a cold-blooded murder, because that's all it is, a cold-blooded murder. Oh, I'm not sure the people of this town care one way or the other. Now, what you're saying is that this case is closed, is that it? Well, you saw what happened. I arrested Perkins, I had a hearing, and he's out there walking around. Look, Sheriff, if you want to do something, why don't you start by arresting Sam Bryant? He's the head man. On what charge, son? Associating with bad company? Keeping order in the mines? That's what he was hired for, that's what him and his men do. Now, it's gone a lot further than that, Sheriff. They've taken over the whole town. So they have. Well, you could have stopped it before it went that far. By myself, with no deputies, not a soul to back me up. What is it you expect me to do? Well, I don't know what to expect of you, but I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get Beth Cameron to testify. And if she does, the judge is going to reopen the hearing and set a trial immediately. And if that's done, will you rearrest Farmer Perkins? I'm a practical man, Ben. And a sociable one. I don't like taking chances on my life. But if I'm going to, I won't come in. Now, I got the right to swear in deputies. And deputies is what I want before I go after Farmer Perkins again. Now, you made the complaint, Ben. Now, I've offered the same chance to half the people in this town. Testify. 
There was a hearing a while ago. You were needed at that hearing. You weren't there. What do you want me to do? Isn't one killing enough? My husband's dead, isn't he? My husband tried to stand up to Sam Bryant and they killed him. And if I try to stand up to them, they'll kill me. Is that what you want? No, of course not. And it won't happen. Uh, suppose my sons and I promise to protect you. Would you testify then? Can you promise to protect all of Virginia City? And the judge? Can you promise to keep Perkins in, in jail, that he won't go free or break out and come after us? All right, Mrs. Cameron. Let's just say that your husband died for nothing. Ben, wait. Judge Scribner will be in town for a few more hours only. He says he'll hold a trial if he can have witnesses. Will you come for me, Ben? You can depend on that, Mrs. Cameron. All right, you so smart, you do it. Come on, come on you take it. Okay, go! <laughs> Come on now! Come on now, Jim! Come on, man! Come on now, take him! Come on! Come on, go get him! Go get him! Put him down there! That's it, Jim! You got him! You got him! <laughs> you got him, boy! That's it, boy! I ain't never lost him! <laughs> well, you just run out of luck. Oh. Oh, 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 go on, Farmer, you can take him. Come on, Sean. Come on, Al. Come on, go get him. Come on, Farmer. Come on, Come on, Farmer. Come on, Come on, take him. Come on, Come on, take him there. Come on. All right, boys, leave him right where they are. Now, you wouldn't want to spoil all the fun, would you, boys? The trial's going to resume at 1 o'clock. Trial? Again? <laughs> That judge sure was a glutton for punishment, ain't the boys? Yeah, wait. Well, what trial are you it. talking about? That trial's it's over. It's all right, boys. Don't get excited. We're going to have a repeat performance. Come on down to the courthouse with me. Yeah, don't worry. Don't about worry, Farmer. We'll, 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 Farmer Perkins threatened to wreck our store unless my husband paid him for for what he called pr protection. My husband said he'd never back down. Farmer Perkins drew his gun and shot my husband. Thank you, Mrs. Cameron. The defendant will please rise. Since you waive trial by jury, it becomes my sworn duty to pass sentence on you. I hereby find you guilty of murder as charged. Mr. Perkins. I sentence you to hang by the neck until dead. The execution is to take place in the yard of the town jail tomorrow at dawn. This case is closed. You hold the top cars temporarily. Not for long. I promise you, Cartwright, you'll never live to see the day that Farmer Perkins hangs.
I've never seen a jail cell before. Well, this isn't a cell, Mrs. Cameron. This is a sheriff's room. Do I have to spend the night here? Yeah, I'm afraid so, ma'am. See, we haven't got enough men to watch your house, and Pa thought you'd be a lot safer in protective custody. What are they doing? Can't have a hanging without a gallows, ma'am. Killings and beatings and now a hanging. Won't we ever have a decent town to live in? That's what we're trying to get, Mrs. Cameron. You have to believe that. Well, Judge, all I can say is that the example you set us today was a very necessary one. And I can assure you that by the time you get back here next month, things will be a lot more peaceful around here. Oh, thank you very much, Ben. Please don't wait around. The stage will be leaving in a few minutes. Oh. Uh, Your boys will be needing you at the jail. Well, as a matter of fact, Judge, those boys can get along without me very well. Although I wouldn't want them to know that. <laughs> <laughs> but we are a bit shorthanded. Good night, sir. Good night, Ben. And good luck. Yeah. his hands. Keep an eye on it. Norton, take a couple of the boys and circulate around out there. Let me know if you hear anything. Right, Sam. That's all, boys. Game's over. Got some writing to do. Gallus is going to be ready on time. What time is dawn? Five o'clock, a little before five. But I've got the hanging set for five o'clock sharp. We won't keep the farmer waiting. What is it, Sheriff? What's the matter? Where's your dad? What's keeping him? He ought to have been here a half hour ago. I know. I'm getting worried about him. The judge has probably trapped him into some long-winded discussion of the law or something. No, not tonight. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure this was no crazy man's idea of a joke. Read that. Hang Farmer Perkins and we hang Ben Cartwright. Set Farmer Perkins free, give him a horse and a half hour head start, and we'll send Cartwright back to you. <laughs> Shut up, Perkins. You'll still hang. Or will he? Now, I don't want to rub it in, but you boys got us into this. Now, if you've got any suggestions for getting us out, have you? Just this. Before you three go off half cock, let me give you a little advice. There's only one sensible way to get out of this mess. What's that? Let Farmer Perkins go. We don't see it your way, Sheriff. No, we don't. All right. 
right. You boys think you're a match for old Sam Bryant? One of the toughest, smartest gunmen that ever shot up a mining camp? Him and his men outnumber us five to one. He's got this whole town in his grip. They're so scared of him. Has he got you scared too, Sheriff? I got just one life, Joe. It's against my principles to bet it wildly. But now, if you boys want to play games with your father's life as the prize, you got the authority. Now, let's see if you can come up with a practical plan. We got six hours. We ought to be able to come up with something. Like what? Like a search. Search every house till we find Pa. How do you know he's in town? Maybe they've got him hid in a mine or someplace. Besides, we got neither the time or the men for a search. Sheriff, let me ask you something. What would happen if we went right ahead with the preparation for the hanging just like nothing happened? Then they never would know whether we got that message or not. They'd just send another messenger. That's right. And we'd be waiting for him. And we'd jump him. No. We'd follow him. We'd follow him right to where they're holding our paw. Now, that's the first good suggestion I've heard tonight. Adam? You stay here. I'll make the boys stake them out so we can keep an eye on anybody that might come around. Let's go. Howdy, Doc. There's some of us you can count on, Sheriff. We're spotted around watching the jail in case Sam Bryant and his men try to rush it. Well, that's not Sam Bryant's way of thinking. But I'm much obliged to you anyway, Doc. All right. Hey, Doc. Yes? We're expecting a caller. Don't stop him. Just keep out of sight. We'll do that. Thank you. Hoss, over there by those stairs. Joe, get back here in the alley. Right. Keep your eyes sharp. I'm still the sheriff here.
We sure needed that one alive. No, there's nothing I can do. I don't know if I wanted to stay alive myself. Let's see what we can do for the show. Joey's hit pretty bad. You go get the doc now. Get him over to his house. Right. What's happening? What was that shooting going on out there? How should I know? Can't see a thing from here. It was Alan. They shot him down. He got the sheriff. How far away? They didn't see you come here? No, uh, they didn't see me. Sam. Why don't we give it up? They got guns guarding that jail. I'm giving up nothing. I'm getting Farmer Perkins out of that jail. And I'll still be running this town. I like the way you talk, Sam. I'm with you. You can count on me. Good boy. Makes it. The doctor's doing everything he can for him, Adam. Besides, it's our Paul we ought to be worried about. Well, we've already tried one scheme, and all we did was kill the messenger that might have led us back to him. You talk like we might as well give up. What are you figuring on doing? Just sitting there? Well, now, if you've got any ideas, I'd like to hear them. Well, I'm with Hoss. We gotta do something. Well, just exactly what? Well, we could at least go around to the saloons and see if we couldn't pick up something. Look, Sam Bryant's got his spies all over the place. You'll only pick up what he wants you to pick up. You sure think he's smart, don't you? Yes, I do, because he is. I'm beginning to feel the key lies in Bryant's mind. What do you mean? A couple hours ago, when the sheriff was all set to let Farmer Perkins go, you were both against it. Now, do you still hold to that? Well, Adam, it was a couple hours ago. We still thought we could find Paul by, by dawn. And now you're not so sure. Well, you're not making it any easier the way you're going about it. Look, all I ask was if you're still intent on hanging Farmer Perkins. I don't know. I don't want to stand here and play question and answer games. They got my father out there and they threatened to kill him. Maybe you forgot that, brother, but I haven't. Joe, I feel the same way about it you do. I done told you that. But Paul sure wouldn't want us all fighting among ourselves. All right, then let him start making sense. Well, if you give me a chance, maybe I will. Now, look at it this way. What would Bryant do if, say, come dawn, we simply went ahead and hung Farmer Perkins? Regardless of what Sam Bryant said he'd do to our pa. Regardless. Now, what would you do if you were wrong, Adam? Would you go out to my father's grave and say, I'm sorry, pa, I made a big mistake? Joe, he's my father, too. Adam. I sure hope you're right in your thinking. Because I don't like the sound of it any more than Joe does. Look, if we let Farmer Perkins go, then Sam Bryan has proved that you can get away with murder in this town. And he'll have no qualms about going ahead and hanging Pa anyway. 
You still haven't told me how we're going to get Pa away from him. On the other hand, we go ahead and hang Farmer Perkins and we show that we punish murderers. And Sam Bryan will see that his only chance is to let Pa go. Oh, come on, Adam. First you stand there and tell me how smart you think Sam Bryan is, then you say he's going to back down. He's never been afraid of the law in this town. No, but he's never been charged with murder either. And once Sam Bryan knows that he's facing a murder charge, I figure he'll be smart enough to back down. And that's why we got to go ahead and hang Farmer Perkins. I'm sorry, Adam. I can't go along with it. It's too big a gamble. Adam, you go right ahead thinking like that if, if you want to. But you're going to have to do it alone. We're going to go find Paul. Come on, Joe. Try it one more time. Only shorten the rope a bit. That farmer's a tall one. Don't want his feet to touch bottom. Old Comstock staying up for the hanging. Yeah, there's no lack of people. Not one single lead on Pa. Yeah. Come on, little Joe. We still got lots of looking to do. What you looking at? I just wanted to see exactly what kind of a life I'm putting in the balance with my father's. Before you let me go, huh? What makes you think I'll let you go? You don't worry me none. Brown will get me out of here. He's smart. And besides, what kind of son would swap his own pa's life for mine? You got 90 minutes left. You want to talk to a preacher? <laughs> preacher. What's so funny? I killed a preacher once. Back in Kansas, I think it was. What for? For preaching at me. <laughs> What's your right or no? To whom? To your sons. Tell them I'm running out of patience. Right off. Tell them to let Farmer Perkins go. One hour, the father will be wearing a new necktie. my sons to make their own decisions. Four oh eight. Time's run out for looking anymore. Yeah, they've got him out there somewhere. Yeah, if we just knew where. But even if we knew, three of us against ten or more of them. It's a risk I'd be willing to take, Adam, for what we got at stake. All right, so would I. But in a wild gunfight, who'd be sure and get killed? One of Bryant's men would take it out on Pa first. Come on in here. Where are you going? Guild Saloon. I'm going to announce exactly where I stand, so it'll be sure and get back to Bryant. Well, if you can convince that bunch over there, you can convince me. Just remember, a lot of Bryant's men will be there to stir the mob up against me. Lock the door after us. You better hurry back. The hanging's at five. Bring card right over here. 
Sorry we couldn't build you a fancy gallows like the town. We'll just have to make do. Get up on the table. Ain't you going to wait to see if they hang the farmer? Sure. I just want to see if the noose is high enough. What's the matter with you, Norton? Something bothering you? No. Nothing. I'll hang him. I like doing it. Uh, whether they hang my friend Farmer Perkins or not, I'll enjoy it. <laughs> Perfect fit. God, Vance, you never looked so good to me. Get down. Now, I want Sam Bryant and all of you to understand the following. From now on, all murders will be hanged in Virginia City. <laughs> And the first hanging to take place will be that of Farmer Perkins this morning at 5 a.m. is scheduled. <laughs> and any future murderers will also be hanged. And if Sam Bryant wants to escape hanging, he'll let my father go. I know, Bryant, kid, better than you do. He don't fool around. You're signing your pa's own death warrant. It's that badge, that stinking badge that's going on. Is it the badge? Is it the law, the principle? It's only part of it. Well, that's the way Pa would think. And it's all a matter of, of your thinking that you know Brian's mind. That you can outbluff him in this little poker game you're playing. Yeah, I guess it comes down to that. But Adam, it's Pa's life you're gambling with. What if you lose? Don't you think I thought of that? Cartwright, his son Adams, now acting sheriff, says he's going to go ahead and hang Farmer Perkins regardless. And then leaving it up to me whether or not you swing. Good. Good for him. He's bluffing. You think so? You know how stubborn we Cartwrights can be, if we want to be? Yeah, stubborn, but not stupid. Still time to write him a note. Bring him to his senses. Why? He's doing exactly what I'd do. Then hang. Then you'll hang. Because that'll be the last straw this town would need to bring it to its senses. Tell me, Bryant, how do you think it'll feel to hang? In about 30 minutes, you're going to find out, Cartwright. Remember, that's my rope over there. 30 minutes. I'm getting out of here, Sam. Norton! You make another move toward that door, I'll kill you. No, you won't, Sam. You ain't got the guts to do your own killing. And don't you do it for him, McNeil. One shot, and that'll bring a crowd running in here. And you'll be the one that's gonna hang for killing me, not him. No, I stick by Sam, and he sticks by me. He's sticking by the farmer, ain't he? Well, he ain't gonna let the farmer hang, is he? I don't know, McNeil. Why don't you wait and see? And when you find out, you come and let me know. I'll be around.
Where's Haas and the little Joe? They're outside watching things. Adam, I know what it's like to lose someone. Do you? And to know that you're the cause of it? Adam, Ben Cartwright's worth 10,000 Farmer Perkins. There's still time. Let Perkins go. Come on, get up. Put the noose around his neck. Come on back here and let me know. What difference does it make? We're going to hang Cartwright anyway, ain't we? Just get down there and let me know. Okay, I just want to be in it on the fun, that's all. You know, there wasn't any need to send the boy. Because they'll hang Perkins, all right. And after they do, they'll be coming here for you. Yank this table out from under you right now. so funny. Old Ben Cartwright. I bet he ain't so high-minded with a rope around his neck. <laughs> Men. What'd you do with my pa? <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> it's five o'clock. You hung him. You hung the farmer. We told you we was going to the boy. stable hanging on the end of a rope. You thought you'd back Sam Bryant down where you go down there and see. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, the stable. Listen to me, all of you. Look, I brought Ben Cartwright back. I didn't do nothing. No, look, I'm giving him back his gun. You done right hanging Farmer Perkins. You turn yellow. You let the farmer down. You just like Norton said you was. You let other people do your killing for you. Feel all right, Bob? Yeah, I'm all right. Fine. 
You know something? You boys look awful good to me. 